دوكسيادا نور الدين نور الدين اسكولس Okay, Assalamu alaikum students. Welcome back uh, with a new lesson. But it won't be a new lesson. We will only continue the previous lesson, Simple Present Tense. And I hope you have understood and learned the first part. And now welcome to the second part of the Simple Present Tense, my dear. We were on uh, using, uh, my dear, uh, the, uh, the uh, negative uh, forms of Simple Present Tense. The negative forms of Simple Present Tense. As I said earlier, we use two negative forms, don't and doesn't. Okay, or you can say in a long form, do not, and in short form, in a long form, in a long form, do not, in short form, you say don't. The word doesn't, in a short form, you say doesn't, but in a long form, you say does not. Okay, so we were on the negative part of symbol present tense. But this is different, negative contractions. Negative contractions, short form and long form. You can say don't, you can say don't, or normally this is a contracted form. This is a contracted form. We call it contractions. And this one is a long form, you say do not or don't. This is a contracted form which you call contractions. So you say what? Doesn't. But the long form of doesn't can be what? Does not. Okay. So if you are using a contracted form, you say, I don't like meat. But if you are using a long form of negative, you say, I do not like meat. But normally in spoken English, they use contracted forms. They don't use the word do not or are not or these and those and that. They use in spoken English a very contracted English. All right. Okay. Uh, let's take uh, this one, my dear. There is no difference. Look at that. Look at this, my dear. There is no difference in meeting, though we normally use contractions in spoken English. This is what I was telling you uh, just a second ago. I said we use the uh, contracted forms in what? In spoken English. All right. So. This must be what the word order of negative sentences. This must be what the word order of negative sentences. The following uh, is the word order to construct a basic negative sentences in English. In the present tense, use don't and doesn't. But please, when you are speaking English, you don't have to use a very long form. I mean, don't say like do not. Are not, uh, it does not, don't use that. Use the very contracted form uh, to look native or near native. Okay, subject, uh, this must be the subject, I, we, you. This must be what? This must be the subject, I, uh, we, you, and they. And this must be the, uh, the first person, the second person, the third person, he, she, it. So these are the short, contracted forms I was talking about. Don't and doesn't. So don't have, uh, you say, I don't have. I don't have. Or I don't buy. Okay? And this is what? A short form of negative. Like, he doesn't eat. Or he doesn't like. What? He doesn't like cereal for breakfast. I don't like cereal for breakfast. I love Somali bread for breakfast. Somali bread for breakfast. Okay, so I eat goat liver and five Somali bread every morning. Okay, but I don't like cereal for breakfast. I don't like cereal for breakfast. Okay. I don't like what? Surreal for breakfast. Okay, let's take a look this one. The, uh, the uh, verb, the verb that goes here 
is the base form of infinitive. The infinitive without to before the verb. Instead of the infinitive, to have, it is just the have past. Remember that the infinitive is the verb before it's the conjugated or changed and it begins with to. For example, to hate, to eat, to go, to leave, to speak, and, and etc., etc., or etc. All right. You understand this part? I hope. I hope you understood this part very well. Okay. I hope you understood this part very well. And let's take this example of negative sentences with don't and doesn't. Okay. You don't speak, uh, speak Arabic. John doesn't speak Italian. We don't have time for rest. It doesn't move. They don't want to go to the party. She does not like fish. These are what? Negative sentences. These are negative sentences with either don't or doesn't. Okay. Uh, negative sentences in simple present tense. We also have what? Negative sentences with simple, with simple present tense. To make a negative sentence in English, we normally use don't or doesn't with the verb except to be and modal verbs, as I said earlier. Okay. Uh, I hope this is the end of our... This is the end of our simple present tense. But please let me remind you uh, yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, I taught you about present uh, continuous tense. And in professional email writing, I have mentioned uh, writing a professional email needs uh, to be very careful about what? Number one, grammar. Okay? So why I'm teaching tenses is because of it's very important when it comes to writing. So we have uh, really mastered it. Present continuous, present continuous, present continuous, present continuous tense. And today we have studied present simple. Present, present simple, present simple. Okay, as I said earlier, my dear, it is very important to know uh, the tennis either in passive or in active. So I want to give you quick examples or a quick easy way to understand these tenses in passive voice. Okay, let me write here symbol present tense. Symbol present tense. Simple present tense in active and in passive. Okay. When it's an active, as I have taught you earlier, you say she, for example, she eats. She eats. She eats, uh, for example, uh, uh, let me say uh, cake. A cake. She eats a cake. A very simple example. In, in, in passive, in active, we have two auxiliary verbs like do not, two auxiliary verbs like do and does. Do and does. Okay. When it was what? When it was inactive. Sorry. Sorry. Do and, do and does. In passive, this do and does becomes am, um, is, and are. And in passive, all verbs, in passive, as I said earlier, all verbs becomes bas participle form. Bas participle, bas participle form. Bas participle form, in passive. So please, you have to memorize the conjugation verbs, the regular and irregular verbs, because you cannot change a tennis 
unless you memorize the regular and irregular verbs. So let's try to change this example into passive. It's very simple, my dear. It's easy. So she eats a cake. Normally you can say, as I said earlier, the subject of your active voice becomes the the object of your passive voice, the object of your active voice becomes the subject of your passive voice. So I want to take uh, one, uh, this was what? An active, this was what? An active sentence. Let's uh, write a passive sentence, okay? Let's write a passive sentence. Because as I said, the object of your active voice becomes the subject of your passive voice. So you say what? A cake, okay, a cake, a cake. When you are here and you write, when you are here and you write the, uh, when you are here and you write the uh, subject, which was the object of your active voice, ask yourself one thing. Is it a singular subject or a plural subject? Because we say if the subject is singular, the verb must be singular. But if the subject is plural, the verb must be plural. That rule must be kept in your mind. Uh, a lesson will help you understand uh, about uh, verbs, which is subject and verb agreement. So, the object of your active voice becomes what? The subject of your what? Passive voice. So, is. A cake is. Because I said, in passive, simple present tense in passive, we use am, is, and are. Okay? So, ask yourself, a cake is singular or plural? We take it, a cake as a singular. So I said, a cake is. So when you are here, in passive voice, all verbs must be past participle. So you said what? A cake is eaten. A cake is eaten. A cake is eaten. But I always advise you, my dear, to memorize the conjugation of the verbs. You can simply call it the regular and irregular verbs. These can help you understand about the verb change. Because I have seen many of you, my dear, saying, for example, when you are writing the best verb of the word make, I have seen many of you writing make it which is a grammatical catastrophe. You know what I'm saying. It is what? It's a grammatical catastrophe to write. It's a grammatical catastrophe to write. It's a grammatical catastrophe. Oh, sorry. Yes. It's a grammatical catastrophe. It's a grammatical catastrophe to write, make it. I have seen many of you writing this word make it, which is a grammatical catastrophe. You don't have to say make it. All you have to do is to know the past verb of the word make, which is simply made. All right. So memorizing the verb changes is really very, very important in English. And I am really advising you, my dear, to know how to simply and easily change the passive voice. You have to memorize and revise and repeat over and over again the conjugation of the verbs. You normally call the conjugation of the verbs the regular and irregular verbs. Okay, that is really a good advice and I want you to take it to understand more about passive voice. Okay, in passive, all tenses become past participle. In passive, what did I say? All verbs must be past participle. In passive, all verbs must be past participle, my dear. So, for example, in passive, only one part of your sentence changes. The auxiliary verb. So, if I am going to write, if I am going to write an example of uh, any tense, only this part changes. The verbs are all the same when it, when it becomes passive. So all I have to say is what? Last class, when I was teaching you present continuous, I have mentioned, my dear, I have mentioned, my dear, about the understanding of verb changes. 
uh, I have mentioned. And I, today I'm going to remind you, please, if, you're going to, if you are going to change sentences into a passive sentence, all you have to do simply is to know the difference of the auxiliary verbs. For example, in active voice, present continuous sentence has what? Am, is, are. In passive, it only has am, is, are plus the verb to be present participle being. In simple present tense, my dear, the active voice of simple present tense auxiliary verb is what? Is, do, and does. In passive, do and does automatically becomes am, is, are. And when you are changing the sentence into a passive, all you have to keep in mind is the verb changes. Because in active voice, tenses do have different verbs. But in passive, all sentences have the same past participle verb. So take a look. Present continuous tense, as I said earlier, has how many auxiliary verb when it's in active? Am um, is are. In passive, it has am um, is are plus the verb to be present participle being. Simple present tense has in active do and does, but in passive, it must have am um, is are. The tense goes on and on and on. For example, if I give you a quick introduction about the coming tenses, inshallah, the coming up tense, which is a simple past tense. Simple past tense has two, has one auxiliary verb, did. But in passive, the auxiliary verb did automatically becomes was and were. Was follows with the singular subject, and were always follows with the plural subject. So my dear, if you want to understand very well about the active and passive, please, you have to memorize the verb changes, the conjugation of the verbs, and also the axillary verb, the axillary changes. In active voice, all tenses have different axillaries, and in passive, they do have different axillary verbs. Inshallah, my dear. I will give you a table about the different examples of auxiliaries in passive and the, uh, and the, and the uh, auxiliaries in active. So you will quickly understand the different active auxiliaries and passive auxiliaries in tenses. And please, as I said many times, do not forget to memorize the conjugation of the verbs. This is Ikhwani, and I hope, inshallah, you, my dear, have taken advantage of the lesson, and I want you, please, revise your lessons. Stay, save home, revise your lessons, and don't forget to pray and make a lot of dua, inshallah. Taraweeh, salat, every time. Okay, thank you very much, my, my dear students. Uh, this comes to the end of our class today, and I hope you, inshallah, uh, are doing a very great work in the house. I uh, hope you have a bright future. Uh, and I'm saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.